Hello, my name is Robert Budin, and I am the owner curator of Artist Emporium at 220 North Washington Street in beautiful downtown Havity Grace. Today is a very special day because we're doing a show. We have numerous artists, probably about 60 right now, in here that we represent. And uh, again, as I said, four years in business, and we're uh, we're doing okay. Here's the star of the show, Pam Wilde. Now, I, I got to tell you folks that, you know, not all artists are um, alike. And Pam continuously comes up with brilliant ideas, avant-garde ideas, um, crazy things that work and bring people in and expand their horizons of the arts. So, Pam, congratulations for again. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, trick. We have that one. Yeah. <laughs> Again, for c coming up with a brilliant idea. Why, thank you, Robert. <laughs> so, my name is Pamela Wild, um, and this is my show along with four or five other artists uh, Ellie Tyron, Hal Long, Jeannie Dunworth, Richmore, I guess it's four, and me, myself. Um, over the last year, I was hosting open studios here at Artist Emporium, and we were doing it on a, about a bi-monthly basis, and I had various artists come in and join me during live painting sessions. Uh, we hired models to sit for us, and all these paintings that you're going to see today were inspired uh, through these sessions, and uh, I'd like to take out a little tour of them, if that's all right. Right here, I believe it was created probably... Oh, around November of last year. And our model was Jeremy Hicks. Jeremy is a local musician and a wonderful educator, music teacher. Uh, he sat for us. I think it was kind of hard for Jeremy to sit without playing that guitar for three hours, but somehow uh, he managed through it. This painting is a 30 by 40, and it's called Strings and Horns. Uh, my next painting here, uh, the model was Danny Curta. Danny's one of my favorite models, and she's modeled for me several times. You'll see several paintings of her in this show. This one's called True North, and it was inspired by this amazing hat that she brought to us with a compass on it. And she, this was another three-hour pose. Uh, this is another painting featuring Danny from, from an open studio session I actually hosted in my backyard. And it was painted probably around September of last year. And it caught Danny in a quick little pose. She was checking her phone during the break, and I just loved it. It's, I love the posture in her, and it's sort of a sign of, of this generation and how we're all very attached to our devices. This is another rendition of Strings and Horns, also featuring Jeremy. So I did the large version, and then I went back ahead and, and did another version of it in a smaller size, um, just to experiment with a different color scheme. And also, the horns in the painting, he wore these amazing horns, and I liked how it worked with the frame. And if you look closely at this frame, it's a little tattered and beat up, and it, I, I deliberately left it that way, to imply that maybe it's gone through a, a rock and roll party in some hotel and, and it's suffered some damage. <laughs> um, my next painting was created in October of last year, um, I probably shouldn't even talk about the models, but this young lady came and sat for us. And this painting is on loan from the collection of Angie Rolfingsmeyer. And uh, she had to have it, so this went, went home with her almost immediately once it came off the easel, and she was kind enough to loan it to us, to us for the show. Um, my next painting, and once again, this is not Danny, if anyone's wondering. This is a different model, but this is again Danny. Uh, this one's called Waiting for You, and this was painted shortly after Ezra's show. And this, actually, her backdrop is one of Ezra Berger's paintings, so that worked out really well for us. This young lady, her name is Brandy, and I called this one of Universal Mind. And I just liked the profile. She had a beautiful profile, and uh, I think it came out well. The next painting is called Peach Whiskey, and this painting, it was inspired by a painting by Manet, which is called Plum Brandy. And I, some, sometimes I use old master's paintings to kind of inspire where I want to go with my next painting. 
and I loved his composition and his painting. He has this sweet working class woman sitting at a table by herself. And it just, it was a lovely pose. So I decided to ask our model to assume a similar pose. Um, and this was started two days before lockdown. So I had LA join me and I think Hale joined me for that pose. And you'll see their paintings, on, on their renditions of this, this same subject on the opposite wall later. Um, and over the course of lockdown, I took this painting home with me and I continued to work on it. And as I worked on it, it kind of took on some of its own character. And I started to think about how much stress this pandemic has put on all of us. And my poor young lady has taken on some bad habits again. They're, they've come back into her life and she's once again chain smoking. <laughs> so I hope everyone's staying safe and managing all their demons. <laughs> but if not, there's always gonna be rehab, right? <laughs> uh, this next painting is also inspired by a Manet painting called Bar at the Follies Bergère. It's a very famous painting, a painting I've been looking at since I was a small child. And when I knew I had this particular model coming in, and I was trying to think of a way to use her for my next pose, I, she just sounded like a perfect fit for Manet's painting. And that morning before everyone got here, I ran around and Robert ran around and we got the booze bottles and we set up a little bar and we actually even had a mirror behind her to kind of give me the idea of, because in Manet's painting, there's a mirror behind his model and you can see what's going on in the crowd but I updated it with a current version of this young lady, the barmaid. Um, this painting actually won first place in the Columbia exhibit, Columbia Center for the Arts last summer, and is also on loan from the owner, Sean Moore, Moore and his wife, Barbara. Uh, this is a recent painting, I called it Man with Spear. <laughs> uh, this was done just recently with a model, Ken Witt came and sat for us. Uh, I think the strongest part of this painting was maybe the hand. I, I kind of like putting things in people's hands. The next painting was created during lockdown. Uh, we weren't able to get together for open studio and there were several artists offering virtual open studios. And this is one I participated in, um, offered by Short Dog Studio up in Pennsylvania. And once a week they would re release photo references. Um, Bill Taylor was the photographer and I used his reference. And it just happened to be that this young lady was a model for this painting also. Her name is Juliet. And when I came across the photos for the sessions, I didn't realize it was Juliet. And I quick, I called up my friend Beth Bath and I said, oh my God, my model has a doppelganger living up in Pennsylvania. And she giggled, she says, no, that's Juliet. <laughs> so Juliet had done some modeling work from them previously. Um, I chose this photograph of her to work from uh, and I kind of did a little augmentation and added a shank. I guess that would call it shank. <laughs> <laughs> um, so don't be don't be uh, fooled by her pretty calm demeanor. There's always something in the in the shadows going on. This next painting is called Last Call. Once again Danny Carter was the model for this. Um, Danny came in. This was painted in it was actually started on January 5th in the new year of 2020, and I just find it ironic that little did I know that the party really was coming to an end and we were all gonna be sent home shortly. Um, these next two paintings were also created during virtual open studios using photo references. Um, I do prefer to work for, with live models, but if forced to, I will work from a photograph um, as long as the photo references are really something special. So this is blue kimono, this is red kimono. Uh, this gentleman uh, recently came in and sat for us. This is Hugh, um, and I kept it very straightforward. I was just trying to create a portrait. I left it a three hour mark. I did not work on it anymore after we left the session. So I just left it in value scale. This last painting here uh, was, the model was Jack, Jack, Her Hirschfeld. Jack, Jack Hirschfield. And I think he came out and modeled for us about last October, November. And this painting is called Red Scarf Memories. My last two paintings in the show and sort of uh, 
the cherry on the top of my cupcake were both created during quarantine. Uh, this one is also, both paintings feature my favorite mom and Danny. And it was, I think it was May, and I was pretty cooped up and getting a little melancholy about the entire situation. And I called Danny up and I said, would you mind coming out to my studio and model, modeling for me? And she said, yep. So we had a private session together and she came out with her leather mask on and she brought the gloves and she brought the beautiful purple dress. And we just sat down to paint. And so once again, I had her for three hours in the chair and then we part our ways and I take some photo references. And I continued to work on the painting after she left, um, focusing in on the sword and trying to build a narrative around this young lady who, this painting is called Saint Cor Corona Quarantina. And our princess has been confined to her castle. She is locked in behind bars. She is ready to go do battle. To me, the gloves represent civility, something that is sorely lacking right now. And in the background, a city burns behind her. Um, and I didn't really have to look much further than the nightly news to get that idea. <laughs> Once quarantine was over and Robert was allowed to reopen, our first session also had Danny coming in. And Danny came and sat for us for this painting which is called Resurrectus Infectus. And in this painting, she is not a heroine. She's actually the evil. So this is a good sister, bad sister. She is offering us up the coronavirus that is scattering and spreading. She is accompanied by Lucifer. She oddly is protected by her halo, which won't allow the virus to penetrate. And she has a small friend that has joined her underneath the chair the rat, and he's push, pulling on her tassels, trying to get her attention, but she's not paying him any mind. But he's protected from the droplets because he's behind her red cape. Um, Resurrectus infectus is, to me, means this is not the first time as a society that this, we've gone through these pandemics from time to time. Um, it's a tough time, I hope everyone stays healthy. Thank you for joining me.